Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Molly and I do mainly mental health videos, but sometimes I do lifestyle videos instead. And today I am going to be starting off a series on my channel, which is going to be shorter videos, including the common signs of a certain disorder to raise awareness, but it also means that it's not going to take as long for you to listen to and you can digest it a bit better. Now today, the first topic is going to be six signs that you have an anxiety disorder. So let's get straight into it. So number one is worrying excessively. Now, when I say worrying excessively, I don't just mean being worried or concerned like you normally would, worrying about an event or something coming up. I mean when you are excessively worrying to the point that it is affecting your quality of life. Number two would be difficulty sleeping, and this would be because you are excessively worrying at night or you can't sleep because you are overthinking, and this is something that doesn't just happen on occasion, this is something that is quite consistent. So it can become quite an issue and you can actually end up worrying about the fact that you're going to be worrying and not be able to sleep because of it. Number three, people with anxiety disorders tend to clench their muscles. Now, this is something that is very common, but often people don't even realise that they're actually doing it. Often muscle clenching can involve hands being tensed or in a ball, it can involve your jaw when you are tensing or clenching down on your jaw, and that can also happen a lot at night and you can end up wearing away the jaw muscle and you can end up needing to see a dentist or get a mouth guard. It can also just be in general feeling very tense, very screwed up. And as I said, it can just be a natural state that you end up in and it's not until somebody might point out to you that you realise you're doing it and it can have long term health effects as well if it happens over a long period of time. Number four, and I think one a lot of people don't realise and I certainly didn't when I was younger, is that if you have an anxiety disorder, it can often be connected with stomach issues or indigestion issues that you might have. So if you're somebody that does feel like you are extremely worried and agitated or stressed a lot of the time and you notice that you also have a lot of stomach issues that also might align with the worry and stress that you're feeling then it might be time to speak to a doctor. Number five I think a lot of people who've got an anxiety disorder will be aware of this already but anxiety disorders often also bring along with them panic and anxiety attacks. Now these can happen for a multitude of reasons. Often panic attacks are confused as being something that happens when somebody is in an extremely stressful situation. But unfortunately, if you do have an anxiety disorder, anxiety and panic attacks can come on at any time. And a lot of the time there's not, there's not an obvious and known reason at that time that the person can really pinpoint why it's happened. And unfortunately, if somebody does have an anxiety disorder, this is a lot more common than just the traditional having a panic attack in an anxious or stressful situation. And number six is something that I know that we all can suffer with, or extreme self-doubt. If you are somebody who is anxious or constantly worrying, it is more common for you to have extreme self-doubt about whether or not you've done the right thing or whether you've done something wrong. Because anxiety disorders cause uncertainty within yourself and the facts and whether or not something is dangerous, it can just mean that the person that has an anxiety disorder will always suffer with self-doubt, whether that is based on something that they might have done, something that they might have said, something that they have or haven't done and it does tend to affect people's confidence as well. Anxiety disorders is an umbrella term. There are lots of different disorders that are included under that umbrella term. For example, OCD, which is something we've touched on before. So if you feel like you've got one or more of these symptoms and they are affecting your life or your ability to take on normal tasks or they are just distressing you, then I really do recommend going and speaking to a doctor or your physician. And I will leave some helpful links in the description below. I hope that you've learned something today. And like I said, this is the first in a series that I'm going to do on this channel discussing all different kinds of disorders so if you enjoyed it and you've liked more of these videos please give it a thumbs up and if you've got any questions or recommendations comment them down below and if you haven't already I would love for you to subscribe because I'd like you to join this little family that we're building and get our mental health awareness spread further and wherever that you are I hope you have a lovely morning day or night and I'll see you again next time bye